Hi, welcome to my craft room. Carol Gatton, your Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and this is the triple stamp technique. This banner I have coming down, and this one I've extended out from the center for just a little bit different idea. I'm going to use Tone on Tone, the Wisteria Wonder, for our front panel, and it'll be matted onto the Elegant Eggplant. And don't worry if you don't have a paper and pencil to write these down. If you go to my web page at stampqueen101.com, there I have all the measurements. Our last panel is our card. And so first of all, what we're going to do to prepare these is I'm adding just a little bit of snail to the back. And you can see that I'm trying to remove a little bit of that tackiness by tapping on that two or three times. With this particular one, I'm going to put two little um, spots of adhesive. Um, then I will mount that so that I have all three panels lined right up. The stamp set that I'm using is one of our new Hostess sets, I Like You. And I'm going to use this largest flower flourish and then this smaller one at the top. Elegant Eggplant is what I'm stamping the big stamp in. And I like to place my stamp on the table and bring my ink to the stamp when I'm working with a larger stamp like this. I want that flourish to extend over all three layers. And so we will press that on and then I will re-ink it and I'm going to do my two top corners in the same manner. So with this one, I'm going to um, have it coming in at the opposite corner in the very same idea as I just did. And then with the next one, I'm going to have those little flowers coming in and the larger flourish going to the outside just for a little bit of variety. Okay, so we will get that stamped. And you notice I'm doing just a slight rocking on this after I've stamped it. And that's to try to get into the crevices. When you're working with cardstock, you'll notice that because of the thickness of it, it doesn't lend itself quite as well to be stamping over many layers like this. I want to bring in an accent color, so I'm working with the Wisteria Wonder with this smaller flower, and I'm filling in these little openings. Really, this would look pretty blah if you didn't add something at this point. And, and once this dries, this Wisteria Wonder, it will look like it's just really a nice accent to that nice, bold, elegant eggplant. So just pay attention to your spaces and fill those in. Once you get that all done, now we're going to remove the three layers. And then I'm going to get my sponge wedge and I'm using the Wisteria Wonder and I'm going to sponge around all three of these panels. I'm basically just trying to get my edges except for the corners. I want to really really accent those and then also in the places that the large flower is not positioned I am going to go in on the cardstock just a little bit more just to give it a little more of a distressed look in those spots. And just work your way all the way around those those different areas. I don't know what I would do without my Stampin' Up! sponges. I, I have been buying those for many, many years, and they last forever. When you purchase them, you get three in a package. And when I get them, I take the one, I cut it in half, and then I cut each one of those halves into one-thirds. And so you get a lot of sponge wedges, so it really... Really, they really do last you a very, very long time. And with this panel, you'll notice there's not a whole lot of stamping here. But when you put this all back together, it just blends itself with the other two layers and looks beautiful. I thought I would try using our Fast Fuse on this one. There's a little learning curve to that, and I'm still, wor I'm still working on it. But it really, really does adhere well. I, I, love, I love the way that it it bonds and now I will go ahead and do my smaller panel and once I get these two adhered onto my mat then I want to line those up and it's just like a puzzle you want to kind of put that back together and I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about you want to make sure that all of those lines are matching back up again and once I get that all together now I'm going to adhere those panels together. 
Don't you think the Wisteria Wonder and the Elegant Eggplant really look beautiful together? I like purples and I, I don't use them a whole lot. Okay, looks good. All right, next I'm getting a glue dot ready. And I'm going to set this aside because when I'm using ribbon to tie on a knot, and I want this to be extending over just about that much onto the other side of this panel, and then I'm going to bring my spool across. I will take my cut edge, and I will come up and over, and I want that cut edge to be extending down towards me. And then I'm going to move that spool up. And one thing that's really important to have a really nice flat knot is right at this point is when it makes all the difference. You do not want to twist in that where those intersect. So make sure that that is not twisted. I'm lifting that up and this is where the glue dot goes. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. And what you'll do is you'll pull that before you ever let it adhere down onto that cardstock and make it nice and taut. And then you'll take your finger and press that down and that frees your hands up and it makes tying that knot so very, very easy. Now bring that top portion down, put your two fingers underneath it, bring up the cut edge and go through your loop. And once you get through that loop, you're going to need to twist this because this has a pattern to it. So right now, just give that a little twist, and you're going to pull on both sides until you get to this point right here. And now on the right side where you've got your cut edge, just hold that down tight and pull only on the left side, and that will pull right into place, and that makes a nice flat knot. So just straighten that up a little bit, and then you want to, Tighten it one more time and you have a beautiful knot each and every time. So easy to do. I think that using that glue dot is what really makes the difference. I'm lining up my cut edge right with that top center panel. And so I will trim that back on both sides. And these are my ribbon scissors and I use these for nothing but trimming ribbon. And boy are they sharp. That's all of the waste. Now this is my largest Wisteria Wonder panel and I just wanted to show you before I adhere it onto the card is how important it is that you make sure that these are all lining up because if you had that turned upside down it's not going to work for you. I'm double checking. I've made that mistake too many times where I've glued a panel on and, and not had the card going in the right direction. You girls don't do that do you? Okay, so next let's put some glue dots, or I'm sorry, let's put some dimensionals onto our corners. And then we are ready to adhere this onto our card base. Take your time in doing this because you want to make sure that this lines up. This is the whole purpose for this is for these flowers to, to match up. And so we have it. Now, I was looking at the dots in this scallop dot ribbon, and I thought it'd be nice to bring in a little bit of that um, white into my flower. So I'm using my gel pen, and I'm doing the largest flower and then the one that is next in size to that. That largest flower does not have a rounded center, but I made it into a rounded center. No one will know but us, okay? Don't tell. And what you want to do is keep turning this and so that you're sure to get, even if it's just a tiny little bit of those two flowers, you want to make sure that you add the dots. just makes such a difference. I think it looks so pretty. With the gel pen also, I wanted to remind you that there is a little bit of a drying time. And when you're adding this gel to this, you're doing this very light-handed. You do not need to press hard. You just barely let it glide onto the cardstock. And that fluid just comes right out. Really looks pretty. I wanted to tell you also that that elegant eggplant scallop ribbon is right now on our clearance rack. So you can get a super deal on that. So be sure and check it out. And so I wanted to stamp this so that it's nice and thin. So I stamped it down, and now I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on the arm of my trimmer to hold that in place so it doesn't shift. And look what a nice little strip you can get. I'm going to use my corner rounder, and I'm going into where the lettering is, my first letter, and then I'll bring it forward a little bit, and then that brings it nice and close right where I want it. 
and then I will make a dot so that I have something to aim towards and then trim both of my edges in to make a nice little banner effect. To erase this, do not use your regular pencil, but use an artist or white, white eraser for that. Two glue dots is all it takes to hold that in place because you want the end of your banner to be loose. Just push that under there, and we have our card finished. The only thing that's missing is we need to do something to the inside. So I'm going to talk more about masking. So come back for my next video, and we'll be finishing up the inside of this card. Thank you, and until next time.